cut that up. Oh, okay. That's a fruit roll up. Oh. Big one. I brought my potatoes. Okay. Instead of uh, buying uh, instant potatoes, scallop potatoes in the box, I just cook my potatoes and then slice and dry. Mm -hmm. And then whenever I eat, I just put them in the pan and add the milk or the water or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they rehydrate and you won't be able to tell the difference. I love it since I switched over. It's uh, saved me a lot of money. So I'm on disability. I don't get. I don't get you know, like most of us, you know, on disability and and assistance. We get three ninety five a day for food, sometimes less. And so I found that uh, by switching over to our traditional way of food preserving, it's helped me a lot, very much so. And so I try sharing with, with people that I can. You know, why buy fruit roll-ups that have sugar in it when I can puree some apples or other fruit and make my own? All it needs is just air and a bit of warmth. So my first dehydrator actually was a uh, rack in front of a south-facing window with an oscillating fan. And I did some meat and it worked. And I was like, well, geez, I don't need to have a fancy doodad thingy. But, you know, because our people have been doing it for thousands of years outdoors, right? Um, and so, uh, of course, I was in bed at 310 pounds and diabetic, and said, I'm going to change this. So I started. <laughs> you want to get her in? I need love her. That's most likely apple. Okay. But it could be apple in a pump. Sometimes. My problem is labeling. <laughs> I tend to make something and then I'm tired, I go lie down, then I get up and just put it away, and then I, after it's going, oh, what were you? <laughs> <coughs> so, um, you know, I try to do, my, especially with my jars, I try to just put some masking tape on top and write on the label and in that sense, right? So that way, uh, you know, it, it makes it a little easier if someone else goes in and then I can say, okay. It's labeled. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm looking at all my herbs going, everything is green, go, go. <laughs> it's walking down to smell it. No, there's too many. So I've actually, um, I have like, oh, I'd say about 200 jars at least. Because uh, when I do carrots, I don't just watch shredded carrots. I also like to dice them or just slice them. So that's three jars right there, mm -hmm. three different you know, ways. But uh, the smaller the piece, the quicker it dries, and the quicker it rehydrates. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot quicker to put in an instant soup, or when you go camping, mm -hmm. or going out somewhere for me, because I can't really eat commercialized food, I found I could just make my pemmican. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically any of my dried veggies and berries. I mix it with my dried meat. Thankfully, we've got blenders nowadays, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't have to pound it. And add a little bit of oil. And oil, you can use any kind of oil. You can use uh, um, sunflower oil. Because our people have sunflower oil here. And, uh, or you can use animal fat. Just never pig. Never use pig fat. Oh, it can go around too. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's if you want to use long term. But if you have a little bit of bacon grease and you know you're going to eat it within the next day or two, then OK. But uh, pig is one meat that's not dehydratable without, uh, because it's raw when you dehydrate. Mm -hmm. And so raw, uh, raw pork is, uh, has that uh, parasite in it. So what I do is I cook my bacon, and then I can take the bits of meat off, and then break them up, and then dehydrate them in the dehydrator, and then I got my own bacon bits for my salad and stuff instead of commercial stuff that they're getting a lot of salt. I can't even handle bacon from the store anymore. It's just too much salt. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I get mine from uh, the Fireweed Co-op. They have a farmer, a uh, rental farm, and he naturally smokes stuff. Uh, the, the meat with uh, just salt and brown sugar. In the city, there's European meats on burrows. And they do everything there, and they do really good quality and local and pretty cheap. Good. Yeah, it's, it's tapping into those places, right? So Fireweed Food Hub also has a 
cost share allotment um, for each. Uh, their bags are a little bit more pricey, but they include meat and, and oh. homemade breads oh. and such. Mm -hmm. uh, the Good Food Club, where I get mine, they've, uh, as you can see, that's all from one bag. It's pretty good to last me a week. Mm -hmm. right? I yeah, and because I'm a member, it's only $10. But uh, here, you know, a little bit more income, it would be $20. But, you know, you get a pretty good selection of stuff, and there again, I know it's naturally grown. Mm -hmm. I found the hydrating stuff in the store was an issue mm -hmm. because they dip the carrots in fungicides, mm -hmm. a lot of root vegetables. Mm -hmm. And when you rehydrate it, I tasted it, and it was terrible. It was just like, oh, this is gross. So when I get from the farmer, I dehydrate them, and when I rehydrate, they are sweet as could be. Mm -hmm. So it's knowing your sources too. Because I can understand why people would try and dry something that they got from the store and say, oh, it didn't do it very good. Oh, well, yeah, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it was dipped and stripped and waxed and, <laughs> and all kinds of things on it before it even got to you. And that's what you're rehydrating. So finding your pure sources. I myself forage in the city, and they, there's tons of apple trees out there, great vines. Uh, I've found red currants, black currants, uh, cherries, and uh, two different types of cherries even. So our native cherry, which is a sour cherry, and then the hanging cherry. And a lot of times people won't, they have it in the yard, but they won't use it. So I just go and knock. <laughs> Are you using your cherries this year? And I'd like, no, go help yourself. So then I would gather it all and then I'd dry it and then pass it around to people in my community. You know, when people would say, oh, I, I'm hungry or come to the market and stuff. And they're like, geez, I wish I had a bit of this or that. And I'm just like, I got it. And then one year, uh, it was at the after, after Thanksgiving that uh, there was a whole box of cranberries given to the food club, but they were shutting down for Christmas. Mm -hmm. No one gave them to. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I dehydrated them all, and then again was able to pass them around to people. Because it's really good for your bladder, for bladder infections and mm -hmm. such like that. Mm -hmm. But having them dried means less freezer space, and I, I love it that way. I don't have to worry about things going bad. In my jars, mm -hmm. I put, you can get those little silica. Um, packages, mm -hmm. but you can also use clay balls. So clay balls that you get from those, um, you can probably find a whole bag of them at those plant places where they do hydroponic. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and because they absorb water, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having those, just put it into the bottom of the of your jars and it'll absorb any water, any moisture that might be left in there. I've made mistakes, believe me. I come back to a container and open it up, like, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Everything went bad. But it was because I didn't give it enough time, enough air time, and such. And uh, I mean, it happens. But I've got better at it now and do smaller batches. And I've heard that if you put it with a lid on it and you watch it for a few days, if there's like any kind of water like condensation on the yeah, side, then you'll then see it's, it. it needs to be longer. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing is, uh, well, my granddaughter loves seaweed, and in the seaweed seaweed packages, they have those little silicone yep. things. So now she brings them to me. <laughs> another one for your cup. Oh yeah. <laughs> and for myself, because my hands can't do the jars, the lids like that, they they have the flip top ones. And I give them that dollar out. Oh, they're like a buck or two, and then that lid has a. Pretty good snap down with it, but it's a lot easier because my hands, I just can't do the screw top stuff. But I can with the. Uh, oh, grape juice. No, thank you. Is that the grape juice you made? Yeah. Nice. It's pretty strong. Do you want it? Thank you. Yeah, grapes. I mean, I make, uh, make my grape juice or other ones. I, you can just leave it in, I leave it in a slow cooker. I don't like sitting on over top of the stove because I uh, get tired with my uh, my condition. I tend to lay down. The next thing you know, four hours goes by. <laughs> and nothing worse than <laughs> get up the crusty 
pot on the stove. <laughs> so having this slow cooker, about it. There too, I get everything from a thrift store. I, I can't go buy brand new. I just, it's just not, I just don't feel right doing that <laughs> when there's already so much in the thrift store. So I've got about seven or eight of the uh, slow cookers for oh. little one for my making salves. Yeah. And that, because I make my own skin conditioner and that. I smell that. Smell nice. <laughs> I infuse the uh, sweet grass into the coconut oil. Mm -hmm. And then it keeps bugs away. Wow. So it's a natural deterrent as well. But it smells nice too. And it's really neat that I forgot to bring the jar because the grandkids were in it. <laughs> but because uh, I was showing them the chemistry. And you can see it makes these little rings. They mm -hmm. look like tree rings as it solidifies. Mm -hmm. So that shows the medicine is actually being absorbed into that oil and then you know, it's good and usable. So dehydrating when people say, well, what can't you dehydrate? I, the, the only thing I found so far was pig. Everything else, I dehydrated and it worked great. Um, from making my own, like some people like chips. I can't really do chips because there's too much salt and mm -hmm. chemical stuff on it. I make meat chips. Meat chips? No. Yeah. Oh. Meat chips. That's good. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I do is I do have a, a meat slicer and then I slice that meat super thin mm. like you can see through thin kind of thing then I dehydrate it and then I can add it into soups or into my porridge mm. or whatever and then also as a snack I can it's, it's better than jerky because jerky you've already covered it with sauce mm. and, and then dried it whereas if you don't then you just have the meat itself, and it's so sweet. Mm -hmm. My daughter, was, she, she was like, wow, this is, this is good. <laughs> and then you can dip it into different sauces, mm -hmm. right? if you want to. I find out I don't need to because I like just that flavor, mm -hmm. and it rehydrates in your mouth. Unfortunately, a lot of people eat our stuff, like the Western uh, commercial stuff, mm -hmm. where you just keep them off it down. Mm -hmm. With ours, you can't really do that. You need to allow it to rehydrate in your mouth and let your saliva break it down uh, because it's very filling. Oh yeah. I had uh, I'd given a young girl some apple chips. So five um, pieces make up a whole apple. Mm -hmm. So I gave her a nice bag, about 30 apples worth, in a red bag. Shaked them all in one sitting. Oh no. Oh, she had oh, oh, she is. <laughs> it's clean right out. She said, you warned me. I know you warned me. She said, but they were so good. So you do have to be, you know, considerate of that. Oh. Is that uh, it's dehydrated, so it's smaller, but it doesn't mean to say eat more of it because it could be once it rehydrates in your tummy too, <laughs> then you get a little swelling and, and and stuff like that. So I find that small amounts is good. I only eat once a day now. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is such filling food that my body just can't have three meals a day of it. Mm -hmm. It just can't. I tried. By second day, I felt like I was, food was coming up because <laughs> it was just like, you know, rehydrating. <laughs> and so winter time though, uh, because I have all my stuff dried, I can manage to have whatever ingredient I want at any time. You have a grocery store. Right? Yeah. So I do have a grocery store. I have different kinds of mushrooms. A friend recently found a chicken of the woods mushroom and it tastes like chicken and has a texture of chicken. Mm -hmm. But I dry it and then I can put it into a pot that I have chicken stock in. Because I can make my own dried uh, stock, mm -hmm. uh, basic bullion, oh, wow. which is way better than store-bought. Because store-bought, I looked at it and there's, there's no beef in here. <laughs> you know? There's no chicken in this. It's all chemicals and extra seasonings and stuff to make it taste like. But I'm like, no, I want the real deal. How would you dry stock? It's so cool. Yeah. It's yeah. Nice. yeah. <laughs> now, what I do is I put my bones in. A lot of times you can get bones from stores. Uh, food fair in West Broadway when they do up chick uh, turkeys for uh, Thanksgiving and that. When they do their organics, they have parts left over, 
Mm. So I go in and I get four or five of them. Wow. And I bring out my big slow cooker. <laughs> it's a big sucker. <laughs> I put it in there for at least 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Let it cook really good. It extracts mm -hmm. everything from the bone. Same with beef bones. I've done lamb. I've done beef bones. And turkey and chicken. Yeah. And then uh, let it really go for, for a while. And all that, a lot of that water will go down because right, it's evaporating off. Yeah. But then uh, I put it in the fridge and then all the fat separates, comes to the top, and then in the morning I take that off. I used to give it to my daughter's dog, but now she's saying, no more mom, just get it back. I <laughs> 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 so she moved in. <laughs> so I stopped giving her the fat. Anyway, um, and then it's like jelly, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can just scoop it and put it onto my trays. Oh. And then it slowly dissolves in, from the heat of the dehydrator. Oh, okay. And then onto the parchment paper. And it dries and nice and fluffy oh. and flaky and hmm. fits in a jar. And, and it's my own. Yeah. And I know what's in it. Because oh, okay. when, yeah, when you have an irritable bowel condition, there's so much flour that's in many, many items. You can throw in your garlic powder, your onion yeah. powder, oh. all of it. Coffee has, canned soups have flour in it too, and I would just get so sick. Yeah. You know, and now I can make my own cup of soup, just a yeah. teaspoon of that and any of my bullion into a thing of hot water and instant soup. Wow. I put my veggies in there into the <laughs> <slow water. laughs> Yeah, put it into a slow cooker, add more water. Then I can put whatever veggies I want. As well as greens, because I can to be honest, I can't stand salad. <laughs> I can't stand kale. That stuff is nasty. <laughs> but once I dry it, it powders. I powder it then. And then I can add that into smoothies. I saw my daughter had um, one of these smoothie containers, right? I'm looking at the, all the ingredients and it's going broccoli, kale, all the spinach and all these green things. And I'm going, well, geez, I got a five gallon kale of that stuff. She oh. paid $40 for one yeah. cup. Wow. And so you take a scoop and put it into your smoothie and that's supposed that's to be your so nutritional true. value. And I'm like, well, geez, I got a whole five gallon kale of this stuff. So um, do you I can also that? use it as, uh, into flour. Oh, that's a flour. Yeah. Like, cause in the health food, like collagen is really a thing, right? It helps with arthritis and pain, and so you you buy it. But I wonder if you could make your own. Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah, they're really really good. gross. My grandkids have fun. <laughs> <laughs> you cook it down and you make the stuff. You cook, yeah. You cook it down and it makes a jelly, and then you can either dry it, or you can just put it into ice cube trays. Yeah. And then you can cook with it, just put it in your soup. Mm -hmm. Really gross the kids out though, because they lifted the pot up by like, yeah, these legs are in there. Oh, <laughs> That's well, what you, you do is you got to you gotta dip them in hot water. And when you dip them in hot water, yeah. it, uh, it loosens the skin. Yeah. And then you can take the skin off, and all that jelly stuff there in the lake, that's all collagen. Yeah. Where did I get chicken oil from here? Yeah. Oh my goodness, you can get them at any Chinese market. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, my local farmer, he, they, because they know I want all the bird, I don't want just, <laughs> I, think they I want like just some parts. On oh, yeah. Okay. And again, I know it's not your favorite, but I bought a bag this big of pork bones oh. uh, for $2 at European Meats. And so, like, I just leave that bag in the freezer and take out this much and I make my, yeah. I've never dehydrated this stuff, but I, I make it fresh every week. Yeah, you know, yeah. so you can get your collagen from bones too. So that's why when I put my bones into a slow cooker, <clears throat> they, when they come out, they're ready to fall apart. Yeah. And then I put them into the garden. Because yeah. then that's bone meal for my mm -hmm. plants. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my plants love it. Oh, so this, so this, I, I take my garbage out once every four months or so. Wait, you say like you the, the, the bone, it's, it's just bone color ground Yep. Yeah. Well, no, this, once, you, once you cook them down to where you, everything's extracted from them, yeah. they start to break apart. Oh, okay. Okay. So even your beef bones and that. So then I just scoop them out as I'm, you know, straining things. Yeah. And then I put those back in the garden. Oh, that's And so then it feeds the plants. Mm -hmm. Plants get the bone meal from them. 
Oh, the bones are still going to store my I know, I know. Yeah. I, I make broth all the time, and, and I, I do use them several times to get broth out of them, because mm -hmm. they like, you can like, do it several times. Yeah. But to do, also use it for the garden is yeah. so smart. Wow. It works really good. I just find that I have such a complete cycle yeah. that I don't really have waste. So even my end cuts from stuff, once I cut them up and that, uh, I have a worm, vermicomposting worm bin. Nice. And my daughter raises pet rats. So <laughs> they're like, whoa, we love you moving in here. <laughs> Everybody getting pet. <laughs> but healthy. <laughs> you know? So the, the rats just, they, when I go down to do my laundry, they're just like, what you got? Uh -huh. yeah. So I did some uh, sweet potatoes. I got them at the store super cheap because they were on the cheap rack. Because usually when they start to go a little woody, well, then you can get a whole bunch of them here really cheap. So then I put them in a pot and I put about this much water and let them cook steam. And uh, just let, almost like a steaming, steam bath. And then the peels all come up. Because with my hands, I can't do the peeling and processing. That's what also got me into dehydrating. Because to prep my food every day, it, my hands got so bad that I had to decide, do I brush my hair or do I prep my food? <laughs> you know? And when you're left with those choices, I said, well, I'd rather prep my food once a year, then I don't have to do it the rest of the year. Okay? Then I can brush my hand. <laughs> you usually do like a big cook or like a big deep, usually mm -hmm. a big prep and then... Yeah, something. so I prep during when things are in season, okay. but the rest of the year I don't have to prep. So this is a busy time of year for you? Yeah, yeah, I'm still doing, right. doing yeah. stuff. And uh, it was different when I lived in West Broadway because there again, I had people that would come by and I could gift, gift them stuff. So now I'm out in North Kelowna and mm -hmm. a little harder to gift people. <laughs> but people still would bring me stuff and, and that. And I'm like, okay, my store is getting a little bigger. <laughs> but that's okay, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it. Yeah, it's only because of the pandemic, too, you know. Because uh, like the market, when we have market, that's the other thing. Dehydrated food does not need a licensed kitchen for market. Oh. So you can uh, even process stuff when it's in, in season and then take it to your market, get a table, sell a bit of it. I, went, I shared this with Nietzsche Common years ago, mm -hmm. way back in 2010, that uh, you wanted to have a dehydration station in every nation. And I wanted to be able to uh, um, get the excess food from Nietzsche Commons or other places, dehydrate it, and then ship it up north. Yeah. Oh. Because one pound of, or five gallon, um, or what is that? one gallon uh, pail of berries turns into 100 grams. Yeah. Wow. It's way lighter to ship one pound of dry than it is five pounds fresh. Right. Right. And then once it's dried, you can rehydrate it. Mm -hmm. So I've got my little, my little thing here. And this is how I make my jam in the morning. <laughs> yes. Uh, because for me, I'm a single person, right? And the jams all have preservatives, so I don't like that. And the organic jams, well, because they don't have preservatives, they go bad in a very short time. So. I didn't like the waste because it's expensive, right? So with the fruit roll up, and you've got a little bit of water there. Well, I just have cold water. That's that. I just break it up, and I'll do this while we're talking. And usually you put in an equal amount. It's a little harder when it's liquid, but I just kind of go, ah, I wing it. Mm -hmm. And just let it sit. It'll absorb that water. And then I can take the fork, mash it, and I get my day. That's so cool. How long does it take? Uh, it takes about 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm slow in the morning. <laughs> I do my, my smudging, and, and I do my uh, other things during that time once I get my stuff prepped for my breakfast. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm making porridge, I just break pieces off and put it in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, So you, you get, you know, apple, cinnamon, Oatmeal? Mm -hmm. Jeez, I'll use my own apples. You know? Or my own fruit, such as my cranberry, or any of my other bit of fruits and that. Mm -hmm. 
even my dry meat, toss it in while I'm making my my uh, porridge, <clears throat> and boom, I got a healthy, healthy uh, start to my day. Wow. Right? Yeah. And it makes it so much easier to to do things I find. Um, not to say I don't go to the stores, because I do in order to get the discount stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a sale at Costco for uh, portobello mushrooms, those big ones. Mm. Well, you know, they're this big round, that thick. Mm. That's a lot to, of room to take up in a freezer, yeah. mm -hmm. store and stuff. So I dehydrated them. They mm -hmm. shrunk right down to this size. Oh. With this thin, I could get 10 of them in a jar like that. <laughs> and I was like, yes! So now what I'll do is, middle of winter, I want a mushroom steak and take that big mushroom out, mm -hmm. put it in one of my broths with the, the hot water, with the chicken stock or whichever stock I want, let it absorb just enough and it's like a steak. Mm -hmm. So then I cook her up and mock steak. <laughs> okay. Can we take a little break here so I can change the battery? Sure. A lot of times people peel things or take the skin off. Mm -hmm. You're taking off the best part, <laughs> basically, you know, because most of your nutrition is only in the first quarter inch of your, mm -hmm. your fruits and vegetables, right? So it's helped me a lot more um, to not have to peel everything. So like carrots from the farm, I know they came out of the ground right there. I will scrub them with a nail brush and that's it. The reason why people have to start peeling stuff from stores is because they dip them in the fungicide and wax right. and stuff, right? But fresh apples from a tree, I don't bother peeling them. It just gets blended into the oh, into everything. You can use the blender or yep. Okay. So the same yeah. potatoes. And then you get that natural, you know, goodness from the skin mm -hmm. and the uh, seeds and everything. Uh, come out easily because you put it, I put it through a straight in. And it comes out a nice puree and they're all good. Okay. But then it's, then I know what's in it for sure. I know how pure it is. I'm not worried about it uh, going bad. When you do, um, sorry, I feel like I'm talking a lot. Um, I have so many questions. When you do broth, um, like I have trays, but I couldn't just pour it raw because it would just pour right off the tray. So do you have something else? I just use parchment paper. Oh. And I just fold the ends. Oh, okay. You can just fold on each side and it makes a nice, a nice little tray. Okay. And um, because I'm putting it in cold, it's like jelly. Yep. So oh, it doesn't roll off. Right. Uh -huh. if, you, if you cook it down enough, it does. It becomes the jelly. Yeah. yeah. And that's why it's slow food. See, and, and, and you can't you can't drive that, that jelly around me because when I see it like that, I get a spoon and I eat it. <laughs> yeah. So good. It is, right? And but then you know you've got that gelatin and that natural goodness from it. Mm -hmm. right? For sure. But then I've got it in my jars, so now whenever I want to oomph up some uh, beef stew or something, I just add some of that dried mm -hmm. dried beef. Uh, and, and then, uh, yeah, sorry, I should move that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, and then, it, then I know what's like I said. You know what's in it, right? Yeah. You made it with your own hands, and it is slow food. It's uh, yeah. it's you know, like I said, I can go for a nap and leave it in the slow cooker and come back, and my stew and everything is ready. Ready. If I wanted soup, I get to it sooner. <laughs> if I want stew, I just sleep a little longer. It thickens up, <laughs> and then I got stale. But I've done it with meat, fish. Fish, I, I can be fish though now. I like that better. Mm -hmm. I put fish into uh, to a plastic bag with uh, maple syrup. Mm -hmm. I did a workshop one time, and I said, well, just get me maple sy syrup instead of giving me money. She brought me about 10 bottles of <laughs> maple syrup. <laughs> so I've been passing those around to people too. <laughs> right? Sure, sure. And, uh, but you put that in, I put a little bit of salt and uh, let it sit for about four days at least. And keep turning it, make sure no air is stuck in there. And um, I'll just take that out and then cut it into pieces and dehydrate it, fish candy. 
What? Yeah. So, so good. You want candy salmon? You, you can do that with any fish. I've and done it with pickerel. It's raw. Hmm? The fish is raw? Yep. <laughs> but once it's dried and the sugar and the salt in it, it's cured it. So then it's oh, I know, I know. <laughs> It's really good. And I found out the Swedish people have something along the same line and they call it gravlox. And they take the fish and they smother the inside with the sugar and salt mixture mm. and dill. Oh. And then they seal it up, wrap it up as tight as they can, and then they flip it every 12 hours. And they mm. put a weight on it and it cures, salt cures. Mm -hmm. The sugar cures it and then they slice, slip, you know, really super thin and put it on a cracker with mustard sauce. I didn't do the mustard, mm. but eh, that was good. Mm. You can get some to my doctor who told me about it. <laughs> It's actually pretty good. You did a good job there. <laughs> a little bit more dill, maybe, but. So next time I'll add dill seed, because the dill seed will have a, oh. a stronger flavor than just the dill. Because right. there again, in one of our good food boxes, we got a nice good thing of dill. So I was like, hey, that's a sign. Let me make some of this grab box. Oh. And in Sweden, what they would do is they would bury it in the ground. That's why it's grab, grape. And they would bury it and then cover it over and then, yeah. <laughs> so there are a lot of ways of food preserving that is not just indigenous, but it turns out worldwide, mm -hmm. in many places, because they didn't have refrigeration, right? Mm -hmm. So I met a lady from Uzbekistan and, uh, oh, she just went nuts over my apricot. She goes, we make this at home. Mm -hmm. She said, but we make like, like carpets. There's like a carpet for them when they make their dried mm -hmm. stuff, right? And they have a winter soup, mm -hmm. and that soup is all their dried fruits and such. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. some people in Germany have. Oh, Russia too, yeah. In Russia, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what they, where they use their dried fruits, not just as a dessert, but also as a soup, mm -hmm. as a main meal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. well, and when it's all your own, <clears throat> why not? Why not? Right? I mean, some of the fruits I do get uh, from the stores, such as when they're in season, so right now, um, most of it's, I, I don't know what, what could be left, but um, before when peaches were in season uh, from the Okanagan, because I know they don't get, and say with plums, it's if they have to cross a border that they have to get fungicided. Uh -huh. okay. So if it's not a product of the U.S. of A, we're dead. Uh -huh. Other than carrots and stuff, because peak of the market, they. I went for a tour of their thing with the Boys and Girls Club and all the beautiful carrots came in and the first thing they went through was the bath to focus side. Oh, oh darn. That explains why my carrots were bitter. Right. And that's how I found out and that's why mm -hmm. when I get from the farm or from the market, yeah. uh, I do them immediately and then I thought. I did three years ago, I asked my farmer because he had some purple carrots in. Carrots come in many colors, same with potatoes and tomatoes. My son-in-law just grew some black tomatoes and he was just all, this is what I And left them on the counter and the dog on. Poor dog. She woofed them down and it was like, oh. Anyway, you know, they come in different colors. So I asked for 40 pounds worth. So I got the nice big box of them. And I got now carrots enough for five years. I don't have to buy carrots for five. So that's why it's okay for me to give these ones away because at home I already have jars of my purple ones and different wow. from shredded to sliced to diced. You were saying that it's helpful like digestion wise to dry your food. Yeah. I found for myself is that a lot of times it's the water that's in the food that causes the agitation in the belly. Mm -hmm. so watermelon. On the FODMAP thing, watermelon, apples. But if I dry it, it seems to change the sugars in it or something in it. Mm -hmm. And when I rehydrate, I can rehydrate using my own water ceremony. And it doesn't always have to be water. I've used uh, tea and mm -hmm. I've rehydrated things in tea. Mm -hmm. And then you get the flavor of the tea as well. You know, mm -hmm. So having my apples in with my bergamot tea, or mm -hmm. my bebop tea, or mint tea, and then you get the flavor of that in with your, your fruit, mm -hmm. you know, or in your soup and stuff. And just like, 
man, I like this. <laughs> you know, the flowers aren't just for looking at. They're not just for the bees. But a lot of our native plants are hyssop. It's got a nice licorice scent to it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have a licorice taste. So that licorice, uh, you know, set to a nice, you know, soup. It gives you a whole variation of things. That's why when people say, oh, give me a recipe, I'm like, you can't. Because <laughs> I don't remember what I put in, but darn, it's good. <laughs> you know, you just go to your shelf and you just open this one and that, and take this out and that, and toss it in and let it all rehydrate. And, you know, and there again, with the water, you can use your tea water of anything. You know, from roses to hibiscus tea, that makes it, uh, hibiscus is, uh, gives it really red color and that, so. Hmm. And then uh, I found that I can't do the, the purple beets, but I can do the white beets. But then having the white beets and then the hibiscus uh, tea, now those whites, they turn red. Because <laughs> they absorb the color of that, of that tea. Right? Hmm. But then, then I can eat them. So there's, it's, it's like a mad scientist in my place. <laughs> like, what can I take from here and here? You know, witch's brew. <laughs> so yeah, say, it sounds very witchy. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of people think I was. Because <laughs> you're like, you've got jars of all kinds of weird stuff in there. And it's like, but it's food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And food is alchemy. Alchemy as, you know, as a, a chef, that's what you're doing. You're creating flavors mm -hmm. from many different things, right? So mm -hmm. uh, getting those flavors <coughs> into your food also gets that medicine into your food. Mm -hmm. like, now I understand why my, I, I didn't like chicken feet when I was young either. Mm -hmm. But now I know why a lot of the Chinese ladies, hard to tell their age. Mm -hmm. They have skin so nice and hair so nice. And even my Auntie Katie, she said, I may have wrinkles, but they're soft. <laughs> and she lived out in the bush, literally. So she was outside every single day. And would have what we called weathered skin, but like she said, it was soft. So I'd rather that than to be hard and callousy. I'll, I'll do the chicken legs, no problem. <laughs> and like I said, I've even seen them at Save Long, Save Long Fruits, chicken yeah. feet. And I was like, I was impressed. I was like, yeah, but so we'll get things when people want them in the hospital. I tried like uh, roasting these vegetables with oil, mm -hmm. and then I dry them. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it'll work like with the oil. It probably wouldn't. If you would have dried first and then put the oil, okay, then they would have absorbed it well. Oh. Right. Oh, I've done that with some dried tomatoes. Yeah. 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 yeah with my tomatoes, um, I don't use tomatoes anymore. I found out that they trigger hormones. Oh, so oh my, 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 <laughs> my PMS used to be a permissible manslaughter, but now I'm a pretty mellow soul. <laughs> I don't have tomatoes anymore. But if I have tomatoes, by the third day, I'm crying from a commercial, I'm emotional. <laughs> so it's like, okay, get off the tomatoes. They're really inflammatory too. Like, I find they yeah, make me yeah. feel really sick. <coughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, traditionally they were only used for puberty or menopause. Yeah. So if you were going through puberty or menopause and you were out of sync, it could help you get into sync. Oh. But if you already were okay, it could throw you out right. of sync. And then we have, and if you notice, a lot of our commercial foods are tomato based. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why all these kids are having emotional problems. Mm -hmm. They're eating pizza with tomato sauce, mm -hmm. tomatoes, mm -hmm. and ketchup, mm -hmm. and that. Yeah. You know? And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yeah, but then it does explain that then to me. Like, after I went off of them, I no longer had menstrual cramps. Mm -hmm. Those went away too. Same with the menstrual headaches and bitchiness. And all that went away. I was just so thankful. I said, I wish I would have known I was way younger. Mm -hmm. So I do try and share with ones like have it as an occasional mm -hmm. treat, but uh, you don't need to eat it every day okay. unless you do want these issues. <laughs> Not really. <Yeah. laughs> I knew of a man that a young man who went off with tomatoes, and now he's feeling so much better. His emotional state mm -hmm. is so much better. He's like, I 
He said, at first I thought, you know, I doubted you at first, you know, because <laughs> I was fooling and I said, food's medicine. Literally, it is medicine. Yeah. So it's from the nightshade family, and the nightshade family are a very heavy medicine family. Yeah. So your peppers and uh, tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplant, those are all medicine ones. Mm. You know, so having too much of one can throw things off. Mm. And he's been off of tomatoes now a couple months and he's noticed the difference on his emotional state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would, he would go into severe depression. Mm. And, and now he's like, wow. I need to get out of the Summer is like the fine time. It's like all these beautiful tomatoes. They are so good. Mm -hmm. No, I don't even, yeah. I don't plant them. I don't, really? I don't yeah, even, I don't. Yeah, they don't strike me as food. Yeah. yeah. I just got a whole bag full. Well, no, yeah, I'm for free, which is fine. But I'm like, I'm gonna make salsa and I'm gonna eat them every day. Yeah, yeah. And then you're sitting there crying. Yeah. But once, uh, once you find those triggers for your body, it makes it so much better. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And uh, if it uh, if it can help others too. Um, that's why even with mushrooms, mushrooms are the one of the few things that carries vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So you can get it naturally. And I found that out too, was because the medication I was on, uh, I wasn't allowed to go outside, so I was lacking vitamin D, went really well. Mm -hmm. So then, man, I was eating the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they hold vitamin D and also pork uh, fat from pigs that have been raised outdoors. If they've been raised indoors, they won't have it, mm. but they do can hold the fat, uh, vitamin D, in their fat if they're out, outdoor based. Mm -hmm. um, which you can get there too at Fire Week uh, Food Health. They have natural farm raised mm -hmm. pork and, and beef and stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. So I just find it works so much better for me. You gotta know your animals. animals. Mm -hmm. You gotta know your animals. Yeah. Because I found out that a lot of these animals that we buy from the store have been fed grains that go into the meat. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're fed wheat, and if you're wheat sensitive, it will come out in the meat that you're buying. Mm -hmm. you know? For sure it is. Yeah, so I, that's why I get mine now from local farmers. Mm -hmm. We have access now. Yeah. You know, I'm poor, but I can still find access. You know, uh, Direct Farm Manitoba has a whole listing of all their natural farmers. Mm -hmm. And uh, same with Fire Week Food Hub, they have all their natural farmers, so they've got duck, chicken, pork, beef, bison, mm -hmm. right? So, why not pay, for, pay that little extra? Because mm -hmm. you're not going to eat as much of it, because it's going to fill you up, right? Because that animal has eaten <coughs> good, healthy stuff. I get farm eggs, and it was so weird because when I was a kid, I remember listening to farmers going, "Oh, someday they're going to be illegal," and it is. <laughs> Turns out, eggs and farm eggs and milk—you uh, have to buy at the gate from the farmer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you do milk anywhere? Uh, well, that's where you're finding some connections sometimes. Uh, I mean, no. uh, Incognito. Well, I, I used to own a third of share of a cow, and I used to get fresh, unpasteurized <laughs> milk from my own cow, right? Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> but like in most places, and I believe Manitoba's one, that if you showed up to a farm, a dairy farm, and you know left an empty bucket in your car, and someone accidentally filled it, and you drove away, right? Mm -hmm. They could lose their license to be a dairy farm forever. Yeah. Right? Exactly. The rules are so strict. Yeah, exactly. So for me, it's kind of like a drug deal. But I have one friend, she picks up uh, the eggs for, for other people, right. and then she'll drop them off for us. I used to keep two chickens here in the neighborhood, but then I got turned in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So petitioning <laughs> though, policies can make those changes. Yeah. West Broadway, Spence, and uh, uh, Daniel McIntyre community centers uh, took it to the city about allowing food markets because mm. it was illegal in Winnipeg. Oh. And so uh, they petitioned the city, and now we have food markets. Mm. But St. Norbert's cornered the market for years. They made it to where you had to be outside oh, the city limits. 
Oh, oh that's yeah. right. That's right. And that's what we, yeah. yeah. Huh. And so uh, we changed that though, right? Yeah. Same with bees on, on buildings. Yeah. Now we have bee apiaries on buildings, and that protects the whole community because then they can't spray. Yeah. Mm. Find ways around it. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. When I was in California, our whole community got around the spring by putting up bat houses. Oh. You, know, you yeah. can't interfere with the bats' food. Yeah. They eat mosquitoes, so you can't spray. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's ways around these policies, right? But we also uh, invested in changing or getting uh, the city of Winnipeg the policy for uh, gardens. Because oh. they didn't have one. And what happened is, uh, in Spest Neighborhood, a, a garden that people had put in on an empty lot got bulldozed because it got sold. Oh. And everyone lost everything. They just came up one day, it was gone. Mm -hmm. So they petitioned the city to have a policy, a garden policy. Oh, okay. So if there's a garden there, they can't just go and destroy it. Mm -hmm. But also, in a, um, it kind of pushed the city to now allocate, mm -hmm. okay, this is city property over here, you guys can grow here. Yeah. Right, and so it actually opened it up more for people to be able to grow on city property. Yeah. So, okay. And that's where you can use that city policy now to back you up. So when yeah. you've got a garden and someone being pissy about it. Like Point Douglas, a lot of people were mad because they found out the soil here is highly contaminated with heavy metals. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But there's ways around that. Yeah, for right. sure. And actually, the more recent lead numbers is that most of the lead is down at the western scrap end of the neighborhood, and most of the other areas, the levels have gone down a lot in the last 20 years. And planting sunflowers and other uh, green stuff, it does not absorb yeah. oh, it the heavy metals. Oh. It's only root vegetables that would. Oh, we've been planting sunflowers in and the And they clean the soil big time. But not lead. Not they clean the lead, and but what they do is it's really neat. Uh, I watched a documentary called The Selenium Solution. Now I'm, I'm a documentary buff. I don't watch sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a science person. <laughs> and uh, the guy had found out that plants, uh, especially our native prairie plants, can absorb arsenic, oh. but not hold it. Oh. It in fact changes it molecularly, molecularly to selenium. Oh, so many of our bodies need, right? Yes. Mm, so it was helpful. But yes. for animals, it's not. So it, it's really neat because in this documentary, don't get me. Um, in this documentary, he <coughs> shared how the native plants actually helped a lot in the, um, the battle of uh, the big one. Oh. Because when you find out that uh, Custer's reinforcements, the reason why they didn't get there soon enough was because they ran out of grain to feed the horses, so they allowed them to free graze. They ate some of those plants that had selenium in them, and they all went lame. Mm -hmm. Or that's what they wrote down, they all went lame. Well, you can't have that many horses go lame. And then a couple days later, oh, they're better now. Because by then the grain train, uh, mm -hmm. the grain came in, and they were able to feed the horses the grain, and it got the selenium got out of their system. And, mm -hmm. But that's what delayed. Custer's uh, reinforcements, so it was oh. like even the plant nation helped out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so I was just like, yes! But it shows how plants, and he was, uh, he had a big argument with his professor about it, because his professor's like, no, no, if it takes it up, it's in there. And they, he used a, a type of microscope that's only in Saskatchewan, and it actually can uh, measure things in a living thing. Oh, okay. It's a light, L-I-T-E type of microscope. But anyway, it was through that he was able to prove his theory wow. that it actually changed that arsenic that it took up from the soil. Because arsenic happens naturally in the ground anyway. And it took it up and actually mm -hmm. converts it to selenium. Mm -hmm. And St. Boniface actually did testing on lentils. And the big area for lentils uh, to grow is in arsenic soil. Oh, and yeah. that's in Saskatchewan. That's where the best lentils come from. And that's what yeah. they used in their heart study here at uh, St. Boniface. Um, they found that, yeah, the lentils were very helpful for the heart. Oh. Right? But mostly those type because they had pulled up that arsenic, changed it into a, a totally different uh, chemical, which the body then made good use of. 
So, neat. yeah, it's really neat. I love that science geeky stuff. <laughs> so, what are some of the ways around the lead, the lead soil that you? Well, they're again uh, raised beds. Okay. You know, yeah. uh, you can't put perennials in them, but that's okay. Okay. You know, uh, but then they're again not doing the root vegetable. But you can do the leafy greens, and they won't absorb it. Okay. Okay. Anything. Okay. I've read that anything that's actually a fruit where you're not eating the body of a plant, oh, okay. right? If it leaches anything up, it'll be in the stems and leaves, but not in the fruit. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, so it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's fascinating science to me, right? It's like so cool. The plant nation just has so many ways to purify the land and clean things up, you know. With that, wow. uh, yeah. yeah, so I don't worry about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Because there again, I forage throughout many areas, and you can you can once you get to be a, a bit of a connoisseur of food, you can kind of go by the smell even, mm -hmm. you know whether something is okay or not. Mm -hmm. and that's why in the store I just like, nope, ain't touching that one. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it takes more than yep. eight juice if you don't. This is what you use to do the topping. Oh yeah, my little, 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 little. Oh, it's really small. Wow. Yeah, but <coughs> because I I can't put my hands like this with a regular knife because it pinches here. Oh. And then my hands go numb because I have a neck injury as well. So that's why prepping stuff really was hard because yeah. I couldn't do it without my hands going numb. But with this, I can easily Amazing. just it becomes an extension of yourself, right? So I can easily chop if I needed to. Or slice my meat, so I just go sideways instead of this way. <laughs> but if I need to go this way, I can. Okay? So it's, it's very versatile. Uh, Urban Anuk on Facebook, he's selling them. That's my very husband. decent, very decent price. Hmm? My friend's husband. Yeah, oh, awesome. Yeah, I am very cool. They they just do so well. And this I made from uh, a deer leg and some hide that I did, and then the sinew to stitch. That way, if I ever run out of string, I know I can take this apart and I get something to sew with. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're, it's just, I understand now why they use them. Right? They're so versatile mm. and so easy to sharpen. Mm. I just, uh, if you have a ceramic cup, just put it upside down mm. and you can sharpen your blades on the bottom of the ceramic cup. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so,
Do you know how to make like, leather out of it? Or yeah. I can dry it and make leather out of it? Idea. Oh, oh, I guess. Idea. Idea. Okay. You want to make gummy bears? What? <laughs> you take this, peel it, make it into slices, or you can make it into triangles, whatever, and take some of that grape juice, put it in a slow cooker, allow it to absorb in the slow cooker, and then dehydrate it. Oh, you've got the best gummy bears ever. These puppies can hold a lot of nutritional value in itself, but also absorb, absorb your other fruit juices. So if you got orange juice, apple juice, whatever, you can make your own gummy bears with that. Right? I slice them long ways and then dry them, and then I use that for veggie lasagna. Oh. So basically noodles. You can shred them, and then there again dry them. You've got veggie noodles instead of egg noodles. You got zucchini noodles, but. It goes a lot further, it dries, and you have a use for all these yeah. zucchinis, right? So you can make noodles of all kinds. I've made it just sliced and then dried them. Mm -hmm. And then when I have, want to make a nice veggie casserole, I'll dough you in with my scalloped potatoes and that, and another sliced veggies, and add the water, let it cook up, and I've got a darn good casserole. But there again, I don't have to freeze it, I don't have to immediately use it. <laughs> so you can either slice it like medallions or long ways for mm -hmm. lasagna. And there again, just have a long container, one of those Tupperware ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, put your long slices in there. They're already dried. Mm -hmm. And then they'll absorb whatever water and, and uh, liquid that you put into it. Mm -hmm. I have a friend that she actually likes a bit of vodka. So she rehydrates her zucchinis with a bit of vodka. And she has her little snacks on occasion. It's like, okay, whatever works. Right? Yeah. 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 So you can, uh, yeah, be really resort. Yeah. So I've got, like, it's a. Yeah. And because I can't put my arms up, I couldn't put up high. So I had everything rolled, so it was like around the whole room. I, when I used to be in the rooming house, it filled the whole kitchen. And people go around, like, that's a witch again. <laughs> She's making some concoction. <laughs> and then one time they're like, geez, we can, we can tell you're cooking something up and it smells like bacon all the time. How can you afford bacon like that? They smoke my vegetables with maple. What? Yeah. Instead of smoking meat. I use ma maple chips. That's what gives bacon its flavor, is the maple. <laughs> so having maple chips from the maple that came down, mm -hmm. and I put it a little smoker on the barbecue, a little bit of chips into a wet it down, yeah. and put them in the bottom of the barbecue there, So and then put the veggies on top. And, mm -hmm. and then they got smoke dried. <laughs> but then they smell like bacon. <laughs> so I toss it into my soup. No, oh my god. god. <clears throat> I can smell bacon all the time. I was like, oh, that's just my bacon. And so even though it's cold water, it takes a little bit longer. Right? If it was hot water, it would cut your time in half. But as you can see, I now have oh, consistency wow. of gel. Okay. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. oh, really cool. A little bit longer, or a little hot water, or you know what? There's times I have one of those little hand blenders. Yeah. And then zoom zoom, good to go. Uh -huh. You can even make this into a fruit roll up too. Okay. But there again, just adding some fruit juice. Oh. And using that little hand blender thing. Because it's so neutral, like the flavor it's not. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. But then you also have your nutritional value, right? And you can make it into a flour, like a dry. Yeah. That's what I what I use uh, for immature squash because it has a lot of starch in it. Oh, yeah. And actually, traditionally, it was called escuta squash, meaning to be eaten raw or uncooked, so like flour. Oh. So I've done it even with uh, fully fully formed squash. I uh, just dry it, put mm -hmm. it in the I got a Vitamix blender, zoom powder. And then I can make that into pancakes or whatever kind of flatbread I want. Yeah. But it's veggie flour. And in fact, the Selkirk settlement would not have made it if uh, the people of Pecos had not taken the dried fruit, dried uh, veggie flour, 
dried meat, dried fish for the first two years because oh. uh, they got here in November. Oh. It wasn't mm -hmm. wasn't a good time to be coming and making a settlement, <laughs> right? No. But they didn't know the climate they would be in. A lot of their animals died. They weren't able to get a crop in, and the people of Pegasus said, "We can't let these people die." So they took over. Oh. And there's I don't know which cookbook there it is, but it's a Mennonite cookbook, and in the back they give thanks to the women of Pegasus for bringing them oh. the veggie flour and all these dry goods set, which they then used. Okay. So veggie flour, I'm all for that. I can make crackers, same with uh, using this to make crackers. You know, make up your yeah, kind of like a dough and lay it out on your tray. And then I, you can take a little cutout thing. Mm -hmm. I like to just have squares. And I just use a pizza cutter. And while it's part way dry, not all the way, then I, I can make the, yeah. the perforations. And then when it comes out totally dry, it just cracks right along there. So even with your corn, uh, you can make your corn chips real easy with that. So mm -hmm. instead of buying Doritos, because now my mouth cannot handle Doritos, mm -hmm. it literally spits them out. <laughs> I used to love Doritos. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, since I no longer have that uh, coating on my tongue, my doctor said that when you eat a lot of processed food, it puts a oh. coating on the tongue. And that's why oh. real food tastes bland. Really? Because it's all, your tongue is coated with that protective. Mm -hmm. Why is protecting it from all the salts and chemicals that are used in processed mm -hmm. food? So now that that's wore off, I really can taste foods oh, yeah. a lot more. It's like a chemical burn almost. Oh, yeah. Like I can't even, oh, yeah. I'm getting like that too, where I noticed that. I especially noticed it when I started sundancing, like even the first year, the first time I'm eating. Oh, oh you could just taste all the sugar and all the salt and everything. It was so hard to eat. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so now I make my own. So that way I can I use my, uh, that pink salt. Oh, yeah. Remember? For any kind of salting things. But I find that since uh, switching over to this way, it, that everything has its own natural salt. Mm -hmm. You want celery salt? That celery, when you dry it, it's salty. Oh. So it has its own natural salt. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And same with herbs, you can take herbs and like basil and just put it at the bottom of a jar with uh, sugar or salt, and then your salt has that flavor yeah. mm -hmm. of basil yeah. Okay. Yeah. or of rosemary. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> you can dedicate your whole life to this. You could. Wow. Yeah, because I have. Oh, for sure. I have yeah. dedicated my whole life into it, yeah. and it's been working wonders for me. Wow. Because now that money, I don't have to go into a store and waste it on garbage food. And I can now use that to buy myself a pair of shoes. You yeah. know, yeah. or other things that I need. And because people throw away these like crazy because they get sick of yeah. the yeah. And I'm like, and at that size, know. they're wooden inside. <laughs> at that size, they can be really woody inside and people don't like them, right? But if exactly. you're, like you said, if you de-iron it, you're done. Yeah. And then they're again adding your own fruit juice to it. Yeah, that's a very good gummy bears. <laughs> yeah. And then when kids have it, they have no clue. They just cut their veggies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and their natural fruit juice. And I was giving a talk one time before the pandemic, and I had uh, rutabagas were given to me. They're not a turnip. They're the old. The old turnip, right? The yellow ones. And, you know, they were huge. So I put them on my mandolin slicer, sliced them up, and dried them. By the time they dried, they were like this. You know, they went psh, small. So usually, when I give a talk, I would put, take one and put it in a cup with water. And by the end of the talk, it had reabsorbed and it comes back out, right? And so at the end, I'm showing them this rutabaga, and boys in the back start teasing me each other. I said, what? What's going on? And he goes, We've been eating them. Because <laughs> they've been there dry. Right? And they were like, they were good. <laughs> How thick do you slice those when you're driving them right here? I do, I do everything really thin. Really thin? Yeah. The thinner it is, the quicker it dries. Absolutely. And you right? just use the mandolin, like a mandolin? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you can have um, those type of mandolins, but they also, I found at the thrift store, 
It recalled a Juliet, and it's a machine that has these oh. spinning blades. You know, I think they're illegal now almost <laughs> because, yeah. They're dangerous. But, well, they could be for people who don't know, don't right. stick your hand in. That's just common sense. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, right. And that was back when the motors were made here in Canada, mm -hmm. and they were strong motors. Oh, okay. They were almost like the Vitamix type motor. That puppy goes on, it goes on. Right, so that's how I would shred my carrots and oh, wow. shred things like just take pieces and put it right through and slice it or shred it, whichever okay. attachment I put onto it. It made it a lot easier than me trying to mm -hmm. do it manually, all of it. Wow, yeah. So, but there's, there's many ways, you know, so you can, that's why it takes a lot of jars because that one item, you're going to have four or five different things that you can make with it. Mm -hmm. So you can make your zucchini flour, then zucchini strips, and then zucchini oh. discs, and then, you know, uh, you can flavor them, and then dehydrate them. So put whatever herbs you, you've made, and then you've got your own chips. You know, that's, that's why I like it thin, because then it makes it nice and crispy. You get that crunch, right? But then it's your crunch. And since zucchini doesn't have much of a strong flavor, whatever herbs or spices you put on it, that's what you're going to enjoy, right? So you can take your chili peppers mm -hmm. and that, dry them, dry that up, and you've got your chili. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You can eat parsley, dry that, grind it up, there's your nice parsley flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, bay leaves, I get them from the store, and there too I can dry them and then grind them up and add them into, into you know, my sauces and such. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, it's made my life so, my food so much better now. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I only have to eat once a day because I can't eat three times a day. This okay. food is just too potent. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But I could, uh, late night, because I usually don't fall asleep till midnight. But I'll, sometimes I'll want my breakfast to be more of a stew. Mm -hmm. So I'll put everything in the slow cooker. I've got a medium sized one because I found a bigger one that's only for bones <laughs> and big stuff. Because even my my medium sized one, I'm going, geez, I'm going to be eating that soup for three days, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I have a smaller one. That way, I can just put a few few items in, put the water in, turn it on, go to sleep, get up. I'm up at five in the morning anyway. I'm so inspired. And then <laughs> I've got my yeah. my strong breakfast, right? You know, or my oats. And there again, put my dried meat in that. And it was so weird because I went up north. And I thought I was the only strange one that liked dried meat in my porch. <laughs> All the elders up there, that's oh, what yeah. they do. They put their dried meat, their dried caribou and stuff into their porch. Extra and I was like, well, geez, is that blood memory kicking in or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that doing this kind of sparks your blood memory as well. You know, so that way then you do start going, well, yeah, that's why we did need recipes. You know? DNA in our bodies just say, build this, build that. And then yeah. it, it's such a, I don't know, I find it such a complete feeling to walk into my shed and know that I'm, I'm covered. So when the snowstorm hit before the pandemic, others were like, do you need anything? No. Yeah, you're not willing to do anything. Do you need anything? No. No. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. they're again with the fats from the bones, those ones I would put the fat aside. Yeah. So I got my bison fat. I actually got a, a big slab of it from the from the farm, and then I rendered that. And now I got my bison fat to cook with. Wow. Yeah. So, so a lot of times better. they just a lot of times they just toss it, right? So I'm like, so yeah. I'll give you a couple bucks for that. Exactly. <laughs> and half the time they'll just say, "Here, take it." <laughs> and even if they do charge, that's okay. That slab of fat I still have, and in the sense I rendered it down, I put it. I, it was cute. I had these little. Uh, like for chocolates, these little forms oh. of silicone, oh, yeah. silicone forms, and I poured it in some oh. little ice cubes. Oh. But they're not ice cubes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then I pop them up, but it's just enough to put into a frying pan to do a, a fry up. What? Okay. Yes. And then, and easily frozen there too, but yeah. I don't have to. Because fat, you don't have to freeze it. Oh, really? It won't go out if you don't add water. Oh, okay. So a lot of people get scared and they add water when they are rendering it, and that's that will make it rancid. Oh, 
Oh. But I do it, and that's why I like the slow cooker, because I don't have to worry about anything burning with the slow cooker. Yeah. I don't have to be standing at a pot on the stove worrying that something's going to yeah. go off, right? My so do you do all your cooking in a slow cooker? Every bit of it. Come on, every bit. It saves me from having to, because with my hands, there's no way of lifting hot jars and, oh, and stuff. Cool. And it yes. and it's a lot of work. Yes. You've got to know your pressure, you got to know, yeah. you know, the, you can get sick from, yeah. especially with tomatoes, because now a lot of tomatoes no longer have as much acid in them. Um, yeah. And so it can. You really have to measure, but I mean, you really I don't want tomatoes anyway. Yeah. Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do tomatoes anymore. Yeah. I had I had pain, like serious pain in my knees for years. I took out tomatoes and the pain went away. No. Yeah. 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 Um, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, 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 uh, <laughs> the pain in my knees. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. My knee pounds. Yeah. My fibromyalgia. Yeah. My fibromyalgia went really decreased quite a bit by taking out the yeah. the nightshade family. Yeah. 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 So potatoes are the only only vegetable you do have to cook before you dry them. Oh, yeah, potatoes, because if you don't, they'll turn black. And that's the tannins, the natural poison that's in them. That is the medicine, right? But if you cook them first, then I let them cool down, and then I can... I got this little box thing, it's, got, it's from a company called Starfit. And you can get it at Canadian Tire, Walmart. It's a little box and it has blades, and then you just put the apple or oh, yeah. onions yeah, or whatever. Know. Yeah, put it in and slap it down. I'll slice and dice, no problem. Right? <laughs> Makes it a lot easier to do oh. to do stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Then it catches it up the bottom, and then yeah, uh -huh. and then I can either have my cubed or shoestring or or a slice, right? Yeah, but it saves a lot of. And work trying to slice apples when you can just put it in a little thing, slap it down, we're good. Right? It usually holds about three or four apples before you have to empty it. And that, you know, I have a dehydrator that I can, it's a big one. Uh, I got it with the Boys and Girls Club way back in 2004 because I wanted to be able to take it into a licensed kitchen. So it's a big metal one. And I can do 50 apples sliced. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a 10 tray. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot wider than your usual kitchen one. Oh, yeah. So I've got a kitchen one too, and then someone gave me two more. <laughs> but they were from 1982. Oh. <laughs> Never been used. Wow. So I, I lent them to a, a young apprentice of mine who was, he was switched over to dehydrating food. And he's a new dad, and he found that by doing this, he's able to, he was able to help out his wife and with the baby because he didn't have to prep. Oh dinner. my gosh. He yeah. can just go and take yeah. stuff from his, the jars and put it into a slow cooker, go off with the baby and play time and come back and it's all, all done. No yes. prep. Because <laughs> okay. he already did the prep during the season that they're in. <laughs> okay. But that's helped him to be able to, there again, give a good healthy meal for the little one, but also not have to spend that time prepping. Yeah. Because prep is half your, you know, that takes a lot of time. Yeah. And then also if you're, you know, if you get a bunch of stuff, what are you going to do with it all before it starts to rot and start to get more right. eyes and everything else? Well, yeah. Slice and dry. And then it's good. Oh. Then you can use it for whatever. So like even my squash, if I don't make it into flour, I still got pieces that I can just break off and then put it into my soup and maybe hydrate. And then I got my squash in there. Right. Oh. A variety of healthy foods. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And it does take planning. I, when I first started, I had big containers. And I realized I didn't need that much, it's just me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but you think you need a lot. Yeah, well this jar, now, it's like, like this was full or whatever, but that was a whole pumpkin, like a small oh, wow. pie pumpkin mm -hmm. reduced to that. Well, yeah. It's, but it's filling, isn't it? It's filling. And you, you can rehydrate it so that it makes like you can make a pie with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then also it's uh, it's filling and you you'll notice that once you start eating that way you don't you don't tend to want to reach for more mm -hmm. because you're already full. Yeah. Right. Wow. 
especially when you make your own. And now I, I walked with my daughter into Costco because I see they've got apple chips now, they got zucchini chips. No. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't have to pay for mine. Yeah. <laughs> but I do the work. Yeah. But the work pays off. Right? For sure. Because now I'm I'm not having to run out to to get stuff. Yeah. I've got all my animal stock and even with veggies, you can make a veggie stock. It just is it's not as easy, and that's more liquidy because there's no collagen in it, right? Right. But that's what I would do with any of my end bins. Make a veggie stock from it, and then whatever's left, everything is out of it pretty well, but then it goes into the worm, worm bin or down to the grass. So maybe, um, we'll just have to wrap it up, but do you want to just sort of talk about your dream for generation? Yeah, actually, uh, we are applying for a grant um, to possibly uh, have a food hub here in Winnipeg and have a dehydration station. So I want to see a dehydration station in, in, in every nation, hopefully. I know it rhymes, it, so it's good. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but if we have that, then let's say this group over here has lots of blueberries. They could dry it and ship it to the ones who have dried mushrooms or dried fish or fried whatever and they can start our Pan American trade because it's been proven that our people traded food mm -hmm. for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. That's why Winnipeg was known for it. Yeah. It's a trading spot, right? Spot. And everyone would bring all their dried goods and then they, everyone would trade because they said, oh well, geez. in the uh, pots up in Thompson they found that by scraping and analyzing the pots that they had in a whole list of foods mm. that were not from that area. Wow. So how did they get there? Right? They came in with the trade. Because I know you guys don't got mountain goat. <laughs> <laughs> they found mountain goat rescue in the pots. Mm -hmm. yeah. Archaeologists. So um, it proved that we had uh, more than enough food. Yeah. As well as our in-ground granaries. That's where we stored our stuff. Once it was dried, it'd be in ground. They found, I think, three of them off the bridge of Lockport. Oh. So then now there's an archaeological site oh. there. And they were big enough you could have stood in them. Wow. Yeah. So those would be stocked full of food. Yeah. And a lot of times they would build their homes over top of some of their storage pits. And that way in wintertime they didn't have to go out. Well, they just opened up the storage pit, take out what they needed, good to go. <laughs> yeah. So it, it makes a lot more sense to me. Mm -hmm. And that, So with this grant we're looking to possibly see if we can get ancient comments and people there. Oh, and make it as a food hub. So we're, yeah. we're joining up with uh, Food Matters and uh, also with, because uh, they have quite a list of, of food peoples they work with too, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Fire and Meat Food Hub. Uh, they've got a list of farmers who have excess stuff. Yeah. Well, then let's dehydrate it yeah. and then we can ship it up north. Mm -hmm. So a lot easier to ship up once it's dry. Absolutely. When I first started looking into it, we found a, a, a group in Canada here who do have massive dehydrators. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but unfortunately, they ship it all to Africa. Oh, they're a church group. Okay. So they get exempt from having to pay for, for the machinery and everything else. And, yeah. and then they put it into buckets and they ship it over to Africa. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why can't we do that with our own? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. so much food waste happening. Absolutely. You know, that if we could just dry our own stuff yeah. and then have a, a place where we can ship it out. I mentioned that to uh, the produce guy at Michi back in 2010, and instead he went and made business. Yes. Now it's called Food for Folks, and he's selling dehydrated food from a store. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so no. and he didn't even tell the head people of Michi Conference oh, about, no. about my no. proposition. So. so at times when I've seen him at our market there after a while, he's got his head down. Oh, and she's here again. <laughs> waiting for me to come over and give him a shift, but I didn't have to, I just looked. Yeah. You know, boy. Hey. It's part of, of our culture too, that once you put it out to the people, it's no longer yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah, you made a business from it, good. You know? yeah. But it's not gonna stop me from still sharing with people how to do this, how to be more secure. A lot more gardens are going in to a lot of reserves because uh, yeah. Yeah. For years they had, uh, the Indian Act stated they couldn't. Oh. They kept them out of the market. Yeah. Uh, they had that permits and everything. If they did grow anything, 
and then eventually those permits became so costly they couldn't. Right. And then the Indian Act came and said they could not use any modern machinery on the land. Yeah. So yeah. it was bad enough to put them on the worst land, but then they made regulations so they couldn't. But that was back when the Indian agent lived there and lived amongst the people, right? And he can, he can find out who's got and that. I know my family got kicked out of treaty list for leading a revolt. <laughs> yeah, he was, a, he was at the, the Frog Lake incident in 1885, and uh, our family was part of the revolt of uh, the Indian agent who was selling the goods to the mm -hmm. settlers in the Métis instead of giving it to the native people that he was supposed to be able to. So mm -hmm. our family went there and beat his butt down and <laughs> took all the goods, gave it all to the people, and then the RCMP came in and slaughtered oh. a lot of the, the people. So. Mm -hmm. But my grandmother, uh, she was I born on that day. <laughs> yeah, she was born on that day actually, and uh, her mother and father got on, on the horse and, and uh, fled up to uh, oh, uh, Horse uh, Horse Creek, up into Alberta, and eventually up into Fort Macquarie. Wow, wow! So we've cool. always been food debt, food uh, yeah. champions, and yeah. you know, the quality of the food for everybody. Mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of what we're, and it's going slowly because I want things going slowly. Right? Yeah. You can rush into things too fast, things can fall apart a lot sure. easier. You want people who actually want to do the, the work of dicing up the stuff and drying it and seeing about getting funds to get a, a large dehydrator, not like my little guys, because <laughs> they have industrial ones. Mm -hmm. You can get them sure. to do tons of stuff. Well, right? yeah. And they have the setup there. In that sense, the main floor is you know, it's all kitchen and, and stuff like that too. So, you know, wow. they can freezer and walk-in space and that. Yeah. You know, so it's it's something that we're working on slowly. Um, we just put in uh, the grant we'll be going in tomorrow. A uh, grant application for it from the Winnipeg. Uh, it's an organization. Well, the Winnipeg Foundation. Yeah, Winnipeg Foundation. I knew it rhymed somehow. <laughs> um, to them to find a uh, indigenous apprentice okay. who would uh, learn from me this stuff as well as help promote the Facebook page as well as we're looking to uh, find a way to animate the stories because I have 13 stories on that Facebook page mm -hmm. uh, the traditional stories are like the rabbit and the rose and the mm -hmm. squirrel in the way and how the moose lasted a year and, and stuff so we want to put it into an animated form uh, I'm dyslexic myself, so reading uh, mm -hmm. is a challenge for many of our people who are visual learners. But if I see it, I'll sit here for a minute. And I shared the story of uh, how the seat got over the mountain with a little kid in kindergarten. Didn't see him until grade six. He knew the whole story. He, in fact, told the story to the rest of the class, and the teacher came home and said, That kid's got ADHD in his hell on wheels, so to say. How did you get him? To remember it, and I said I didn't. I just told him the story, and he remembered because he visualized in his mind that see going into the mouth of the bird and then flying over the mountain and gets pooped out and gets stratified and has its own fertilizer. <laughs> he remembered the whole story. Yeah. Where can I find those stories on the page? Yes, yeah, it's on the on the with video. Oh, well, if yeah. I just search videos on the page, yeah. then okay. Yeah, okay. on the Facebook page. Yeah. We did uh, start them in February, I think it was. Yeah. We did about 13 or 14 of them. So in there are, through the story, you learn about what to pick, when to pick, how to pick. Mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of people are picking rose hips right now. They shouldn't be. Sure. It's not the time for them. They need the cold to, to set that vitamin C. One rose hip is equal to 10 oranges in vitamin C. Mm -hmm. So I don't need oranges. <laughs> Or just don't agree with me anyway. But uh, rose hips, yeah, I wait for winter and then winter time they can crack open, you can get all the seeds out real easy. It doesn't leave everything sticky on your fingers because it's cold and you're very quick because <laughs> it's cold. Mm -hmm. But it also yeah, is a way of you know respecting that food. Mm -hmm. you know, and then when I look at it, well, if I have one rose hip a day for winter, I'm good for my vitamin C intake. 
I'm not buying it from the bottle. Okay? It's not all processed. And they say one tablespoon of rose hip uh, paste is enough for a thoroughbred horse. So, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was wow. like, yeah, I can go for that. But the seeds, don't throw the seeds away. The seeds, you can put them in a pot and you can boil them and the, the oil from it is a very great skin conditioner. Mm. And my auntie used it and then I find out it's called Retin-A by the, uh, for mm. acne in that. Oh, okay. It's called Retin-A that they sell in the stores and it's actually made from those hip seeds. Mm. So, yeah. Cuts out the middleman, nothing in a tube if I've got any of my little, you know, dried seeds and then what I need, I'll just put it in a little thing and boil it up and then make use of it, right? And, yeah. Wow, a friend of mine makes real sip oil for Yeah, and it's so beautiful. People pay for it, pay out of, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. premium for rose products. Yeah. But now, but once you start harvesting, you know why. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And never use metal. Never use metal because metal vitamin C will react to metal oh. and neutralize. That's why I use slow cookers. Slow oh, cookers are all clay. Yeah. yeah, they're all clay and all glass. But if I if I, if I eat food that where it's been cooked in metal, I can taste it now. Yeah. Hmm. There's a good book. It was called. Uh, uh, not, um, North American Indian Garden by Buffalo Bird Woman. Now back then, woman went to lot to write, but a man wrote it out for her, and it was under Buffalo Bird Woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, she explained how when she would go, they would go to families who switched over to, to metal pots so that they could taste mm -hmm. the metal. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know. And when your palate becomes so sensitive and so sensitive because of good food, yeah, I can taste metal when I have other people's mm -hmm. food. Yeah. But if it's cooked with, in a slow cooker, well, like I said, it's all clay, and those are clay pots in there. Yeah. And that's why our traditional clay pots were cone-shaped, because they could nestle into the coals, mm -hmm. and then be like a slow cooker. Okay. <laughs> First mm -hmm. slow cookers ever. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> clay pots that were nestled in into mm -hmm. the coals, because we never cooked over a hot fire. Throw them up all in the pot, see? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> and, and, well, and they analyzed the clay, and they found that it, uh, bentonite clay holds a lot of antibacterial properties. So oh. it was it, they weren't hard to uh, to clean because they didn't hold on to that bacteria. Hmm. They actually killed it. There's a local artist who that makes like Casey Adams makes a lot of um, clay pot clay. Yeah. The archaeologists they found uh, shards of uh, pots that they figured from the from the size that they were four feet wide. Oh, wow. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. That's why we were not hunter gatherers. Gatherers, yes, but <laughs> and we did hunt, but we weren't roaming around. No one's going to be carrying a four foot pot. <laughs> oh my <laughs> word. <laughs> The pot's almost as big as this table. Yeah. <laughs> and they tried to figure out, yeah, because it was so thin, they were trying to figure out, well, how did they get it so thin? Yeah. Well, it turned out they mixed the clay with cattail fluff. Oh. And that cattail fluff, fluff acts as a striation in, into, the, into oh. the clay, and then they could make it real thin, then it made it light. Oh, wow. So there again, another scientific <laughs> aspect of it. No. Blue, blowing the archaeologists away because they're like, holy oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They had this down in silence to them. Too. <laughs> yeah, just blows your mind, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <she made>? wow. <laughs> and the Manitoba Museum right now, um, the archaeologist that was there that shared with me uh, you know, some, some of their writings and findings before the fur trade food here. And he's now retired. Mm -hmm. But they've now got new uh, dioramas mm -hmm. and stuff. Oh, okay. And that, and I heard that the museum is going to be free from tomorrow through till uh, October fourth. Oh. It'll be free forever. Oh, wow. for everyone. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So I told my daughter, "We're going because I want to see those new, new ones because they they found a lot of this stuff, right? So now it's going into the into the museums as." You know, the fact that we weren't part of old history, but 
This is real science. So when you, when you find out that all the food that you've been growing yeah. is all indigenous food on top of it, as well as our way of cooking it, then we were never food insecure. And we were never without. And, and also, no one in any group would be allowed to go without. Mm -hmm. The children and elderly were fed first, and then everyone got the... Even when they cut fish, there's certain parts of the tail and that would be yeah, cut. Yeah, that's yeah. for the children. Uh -huh. That's for the elders, and then the other part is for the wow. for the people in the middle. <laughs> well, even now there's um, I've seen it posted online. People are getting corn with a fungus on it, and they call it yutacloche, and that's our traditional, actually good food. Oh. And it's a fungus. It's uh, it's kind of grayish, and then it can go black. <coughs> it's always more better. Oh. But oh. Europeans call it smut. Oh. Because they can't sell corn once they smut. Oh. Okay. But the farmer I know, he could never grow corn without it. And he said, like, I can't seem to grow corn without getting this smut. And I said, well, yeah, you got tobacco up on top of your hill. Tobacco times are too close to corn. Oh. Oh. So every, every wind that blew down, <laughs> it blew the corn, the tobacco, oh. sent uh, and microbes over to the corn, and then the corn had the smut. But it's called yutaklonche, and, and down in the southern states, now, it is, it's like a truffle. It's delicious. Oh. It is uh, the, the best of the It's vegetables. like a seasoning. Yeah. Oh, it's so every tamale, every tamale mm -hmm. down there has two de on there when it's fresh. Wow. I've tried it. Hmm? Did you have it? Yep. In fact, the, the yeah. farmer here, he, he brings me a, a, a bag of it every oh. year. It's like, here, we try it again. You can get corn if you got the de yeah. But I told him, I said, why don't you take some of it to the Mexican restaurants and, and to feast? Get them to start using it again. Mm -hmm. Right? How do you spell it? Uh, H U I T I C L O C H E. I think it's. Okay. Yeah. But there again, that that huge clutch would first be put into a pot, be boiled, and it, there'd be like a foam comes to the top. And then that was given specifically for babies. Uh, so antioxidants, oh. uh, whatever's in it, what they knew was best for the elderly and for the babies. Cool. Specifically for babies. That's so cool. Yeah. Cool. So when you see how much of our food is so potent, mm -hmm. you know, and Europeans thought it was their food, they know it's not. Maybe the beets are, but <laughs> all the squash and tomatoes, potatoes, peanuts, all of that's ours. Yeah. Right. So even dragon fruit, get that. Really? Yeah, dragon fruit's oh. indigenous. To Canada? Uh, not to Canada, okay. but to the Americas. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And our sweet potatoes and stuff. Right. Yeah. So,